So this video is um, it's like a part one of what's going to be a two-part guide, really, on how to get um, your Quest set up with your gaming PC over virtual desktop wirelessly for a reliably good wireless experience. Now, there's two prerequisites to um, to this PC wireless VR for uh, eighty pounds, or yeah, probably probably near a ninety pounds actually, and that is that you have a gaming PC capable of running PC VR. So it's got to be pretty beefy, and the beefier the better, because not only are you rendering the the PC VR game, you've then got to compress that into your chosen video format, and then send it over the air via your Wi-Fi router to um, to your Quest. So the faster your PC, the better experience you're gonna get. Your PC is where this whole process begins. So if your PC isn't fast enough, if you've got 800 icons in your taskbar, things all running at once, and your computer doesn't run smoothly in the first place, you're not in a good place to start with. So yeah, you must have a good good high-spec gaming PC that's, that's running well, uh, and you must, of course, have an Oculus Quest 2. Now, the reason it's going to be a two-part video is because this video is where I'm going to explain the few things that you'll need to buy to be able to then do what I show you how to do in the second video. Now, I've been experimenting with virtual desktop for a little while, and I was using my router that came with my broadband. It's a few years old. It supports 5 gigahertz. It supports AC, um, and a lot of people say they have no problems using just that 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi 5 AC connection without any problems. Well, for me, it wasn't reliable. I was getting frame drops, I was getting stutters, not even micro stutters, full-on stutters, hangs, you might say, and it was just motion sickness city. And other times, you know, it would run perfectly fine, but, you know, only for a few seconds or so, and then i get a stutter or a, or a drop or, or something. The image quality, you know, was, was really very good. Um, in, the, in the titles that work. And again, with Virtual Desktop, not all PC VR games work. Some work really well, some don't work at all, and some find themselves in the middle. They work, but they don't work well enough whereby you perhaps want to play them this way. But this, this two-part guide that I'm doing is, because I've now got 100% smooth, silky, reliable, wireless PC VR through my Quest 2, um, for the games that do work well in virtual desktop. Obviously, the ones that don't work just don't work. Things like Stormland, for example, um, the way they... Uh, what is it the way they do? The way they do... They do some sort of pre-rendering, I believe. The, the guy that makes virtual desktop did explain this, and I, I read it a while back. But basically, the way the guys at Stormland do some... I think it's pre-rendering. They almost render some frames ahead. It just doesn't work with the way virtual desktop works. So some games just won't work. But the ones that do work are working really, really well now. And I am so pleased. And I'm so pleased I spent this extra 80 or 90 quid to get the parts I needed to make this work well. And I'm really pleased I didn't give up after trying with my standard um, router that come with my internet set up uh, and, and just sort of go, oh, well, you know, it's a bit buggy, it's a bit jerky, and just not worry about it. Because now I've got a really good, stable, reliable, playable experience. And as I say in the next video, I'm going to take you through step by step. It's quite a long, I say it's quite a long process. There's quite a few steps you need to do from start to finish if you've done nothing but got a Quest 2 and a gaming PC. There are some things that if you've already got those things, you might have already done. You might have already had to play around with virtual desktop. You might have already had to play around with SideQuest. These are all things you'll need to use, and that's why I'm going to do a step-by-step. -step. Because I have looked around at other YouTubers' videos, and what I had to do was piece together bits from all different videos um, to get this whole process to work. To, to me, there seems to be... There, there isn't like one clear video showing you from start to finish how to do it. So that's what we're gonna do next time. But today, I'm gonna to tell you what you need to buy. Because for me, even though my router supported five gigahertz and seemed to be stable and reliable and there was no other interference because I live in the middle of nowhere, there's no other houses around. So there is only my, my channel being used. It just wasn't good enough. So I did a bit of research and a lot of people online, on YouTube, uh, on Reddit, they recommend particular 
routers, but none of them seem to be available here in the UK or, or they were out of stock or they were really highly priced. Some people are paying 250 to 300 pounds for one and that's the price of another Quest 2. So I think a lot of us are not going to justify spending that sort of money just to be able to connect our Quest 2s to our gaming PC. Now I realise I'm waffling a little bit here but I'm just setting the scene and sort of explaining what we're going to be doing. So the first thing you need to do, I searched around looking at specification after specification to try and find a good router to use as an access point for this wireless setup. Now I didn't want to spend 250 to 300 pounds, but at the same time spending 25 pounds, if it was even possible to get a Wi-Fi 6 router for 25 pounds, would be too cheap. We all know that if you buy cheap, you buy twice in a lot of, a lot of instances. So I found a middle ground, it's a TP-Link Archer AX10, Wi-Fi 6 router, AX1500. Now there will be a link to this both for Amazon and for eBay. Looking at this right now as I make the video, I actually got it for about 14 quid cheaper than what it seems to be on Amazon and on eBay right now. So unfortunately, you guys are gonna to have to pay a little bit more if you want one immediately. And there also seems to be quite low stock. There's only six left on Amazon. Uh, and eBay, what have we got on there? Where's my mouse cursor? eBay's saying they've got, oh, it might even be the same seller then because they've only got six available as well. So yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of these kicking about, at least right now. I mean, there might just be arbitrary figures and, and they just put in 10 and they've sold four and so it says there's six left. Maybe they've got loads. Um, there are some other sellers on eBay as well, but they go up in price a little bit. Um, quite a lot in fact some of them was as high as 120 pounds but yeah I paid um, 68 pounds for my one uh, but uh, yeah the cheapest we're looking at right now is 82.99 with free delivery now so you need you need that and it works flawlessly and in the next video I'm going to take you through step by step how to set it up what options you need to change in the configuration and all those things for now if you're looking to do this, you need to buy one of these, and I buy one quick before they all disappear. Um, one thing we have had all throughout 2020 is stock issues with everything, so if you want one of these, get one bought sharpish. So you need that. Um, it is a Wi-Fi 6 router, so that's effectively two 5 gigahertz signals. You get double the bandwidth, and because it's not a cheap, cheap router, the latency is good, the output power rating is quite high, and in my testing and my usage, it's working flawlessly. So grab yourself one of those. And again, if you if you you can try the route you've already got at home. But if you're not, if you're having issues, for me, this and the other thing we're about to buy in a minute are what cured the issues for me. Because I configured my my home router that I already had exactly as it needed to be, and it just wasn't good enough, basically. So this is what I chose, what I settled on, and it's worked really well for me. So grab one of these. The other thing that I changed. I bought two new Cat7 network cables uh, by Delicon. Um, I bought one to go from my current home router that serves the internet to my house to the TP-Link Archer. And then I bought, a, so that was like two meters because you, you wanna try and have these two routers as far apart as possible. So I bought a two meter cable so that they can sit. One's actually up on a shelf, in fact, it's in the background. You can just see the four aerials of it sticking up there. So that's where that sits. And then on the floor, tucked away behind some racing rigs, um, you're, uh, you're gonna find the um, my household router. So they seem to be fine at that distance apart. So then the other thing I bought was these, these network cables. I bought a short one to go from one to the other, and then I bought a 10 meter one to go from there to my gaming PC, which is at the desk I'm at now. Um, the reason I did this is because my network cables I've had kicking about for almost 20 years and they've been rolled up loads of times, they've been ran all around different houses and you know, you, you just know they're not as good as they could be. And when it comes to pardon me, reducing these latencies as much as possible, you want everything to be in tip top condition. So for the sake of what, 499 for the two meter one, and then I think it's, you can just, yeah, you can drop down and just choose the length you want for the next one. So $8.99 for the 10 meter one, it's not a big investment and it guarantees a good quality signal from your gaming PC to your TP-Link 
and then from your TP link to your main router. The only reason you connect it to your main router is so that you have internet at your gaming PC because that's now going through the TP Archer. If you didn't do that, you'd have no internet on your gaming PC. You don't need the internet to play PC VR games on the Quest, it's just you won't have it for your PC if you don't link it back to your home router. So they are the two things you need to buy, or three things, there's, three, there's two cables and a router. So get those bought if you want to do exactly as I'm going to show you how to do. Um, be sharpish if those routers do disappear out of stock. Uh, and then we'll come back uh, in a few days' time, because it's going to be quite a, a long and involved video with lots of screenshots and capture and, and what have you. And I'm going to take you through, step by step, how to set this up to get the smoothest and best possible experience. And for me, it is on par with PC VR, both visually and both with smoothness and reliability. No stuttering, no micro stutters, no hangs, no compression artifacts, no nothing. Uh, in the games, again, that do work with virtual desktop because not everything does. So yeah, get those bits bought up if you wanna do this. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe because the step-by-step -step guide will be coming in a few days, uh, maybe towards the weekend if I can get it done. I've got a lot of other things to get done as well. But then you'll all be able to enjoy, hopefully, wireless PC VR just as smoothly and reliably as what I can. In the meantime, have a good week and take it easy.